Welcome to our studio in Yerevan, Mr. Khachikian. Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow, Armenians around the world will, will mark this 99th anniversary of genocide. We're just one year short of, you know, 100th anniversary. And, and are we doing enough for international recognition of great Armenian tragedy? In, in the West, for example, there is only one country that, you know, recognized the Armenian genocide clearly, unequivocally, and with full procedures, with presidents signing uh, the recognition like into the law. We don't have any other uh, cases like that. And, and all other cases, in fact, are either the genocide is recognized by the parliament or by some, in other, some other forms. And are we doing enough? No, I don't think uh, we can ever do enough for something as important to our people. You know, of course, in the United States, we work diligently to advance the cause of recognition. Now, but to us, recognition is a step, a step towards justice, towards uh, appropriate uh, reparations. And we constantly push the ball forward for uh, recognition, but at the same time, on a variety of fronts, we are putting greater effort uh, into reparations. And I would say in um, all of the communities where uh, our fellow Armenians live, whether it be Canada or France or Argentina, uh, obviously throughout the Middle East, you know, uh, we all need to redouble our efforts. You know, the we're not going to stop, of course, when the hundredth comes and goes. Um, that's, of course, what Turkey would want, and, and we will continue on um, as a race, as a nation, um, in yeah. these efforts to bring Turkey to justice. Yes, and, and there's this traditional waiting period. When it starts usually on April 20th. We wait for a couple of days to hear what the President of the United States will say. Now, now this period is prolonged. Now, it's U.S. president has one year to prepare for the major breakthrough in this. Um, now we have U.S. Senate committee, foreign relations committee, adopted a resolution, which is very important, and they recognize the genocide. And now, uh, is there any chance that this will reach to the president's desk or not? The action in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee was very significant because it's been 25 years since the United States Senate has spoken on this issue. Um, our ability to advocate in the Senate is limited by the nature of the Senate, which is to say that there are two senators from every state. The two senators from California, where we have very Huge. large Armenian populations, have the same number of votes as the two senators from Arkansas, where we have very few. Armenians. Um, so that's why, as opposed to the House of Representatives, the Senate is a more difficult setting for us to advance our issue. Nonetheless, uh, with the strong support of Senator Robert Menendez from New Jersey uh, and um, actually one of my U.S. Senators, Mark Kirk from Illinois, uh, the measure was introduced. And uh, it's bipartisan, right? Bipartisan. Um, it was passed on a vote of 12 to 5. Uh, most of the Democrats voted for it. Two very prominent Republicans voted for it. John McCain. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for, for the first time. For the first way, time, right? yes. Former uh, candidate for president. And uh, Marco Rubio, uh, who is a new young senator from Florida, but who aspires to be president. Mm -hmm. uh, he's of um, uh, a Cuban origin, and uh, he's a Cuban-American. and. Um, it was significant that both of them were supportive of this. Uh, in answer to your question, we hope to advance this resolution in the full Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be challenging, but nonetheless, the majority leader of the Senate, Harry Reid from Nevada, is already a co-sponsor. And uh, with his support and the support of senior Republicans, we would hope to bring this forward for a vote. Uh, because in the United States Senate, 40, 41 senators can block something, 
um, it's a significant challenge. Uh, we'll work hard to, to, to advance it. Um, resolutions don't require the president's signature. So uh, I see. Yeah. That, that, will not, might, yeah. that will not come to the president's desk. However, um, introduced in the House um, about three weeks ago is a different but very important piece of legislation. Uh, and this legislation, which was introduced by uh, Representative uh, Ed Royce from California mm -hmm. and Elliot Engel from uh, New York, both of whom are here visiting Armenia yeah. um, starting uh, tomorrow. Uh, they are respectively the senior Republican and the senior Democrat on the committee. And they, they've introduced legislation that would call upon the United States State Department in its annual uh, religious freedom report to have Turkey uh, account for every single religious property that they have confiscated. From uh, the Armenian? Armenians, sure. Assyrians, okay. it uh, covers the whole uh, Greeks and Cypriots. I see. Uh, obviously more property was taken from Armenians. Uh, there were approximately uh, 2,000 churches and extensive church properties throughout, whether they have been schools, community lands. centers, lands, uh, cemeteries, mm -hmm. hospitals, whatever the case. That would be very important um, legislation. And if passed through the House and then the Senate, that would come to I see. Um, the president's desk, which is uh -huh. why I'm uh -huh. um, speaking about it now. Because uh, Congressman Royce and Engel have introduced it on a bipartisan basis, the senior Republican and the senior Democrat, um, I believe it will pass the House Foreign Affairs Committee. But uh, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Is this uh, in other form is recognition for uh, recognition of the Armenian genocide or this is uh, uh, other legislation? This is other legislation. It well, language this is, about recognition. It does not have language about recognition, uh -huh. but it speaks to reparations. It speaks to return of properties. It is very pragmatic, so, uh, very it, important. Right, and because it's focused on uh, churches and religious properties, uh, it would have appeal to a broader segment of Congress than specifically genocide uh -huh. recognition, and also because it includes uh, other Christians, such as Greeks and, and uh, Assyrians and Cypriots, it will broaden its appeal. So it, race, it, yeah. it is our hope that by being more ecumenical in approach and by focusing on you know, properties, we both have a greater chance of, of passage, but also setting a very important precedent. You know, where did these churches come from that Turkey has? You or I didn't sign over the deed. Our grandparents yeah, didn't sign over the deed. Right. Obviously, they were taken. Uh, they were confiscated by the government. Interestingly, contrary to Turkish law that was in place at the time, the government didn't have the right to take it, but they did. They did. Uh, and obviously, they did as a function and part and parcel of the genocide. So while the legislation uh, does not call for recognition of the genocide, it speaks to the consequences and it speaks to justice uh, for what has occurred. It's, it's more dealing with the compensation side of right. the genocide. And now we have uh, uh, John Bain, a uh, House Speaker, saying that you know he will make sure that a, no resolution on Armenian genocide is introduced in, in the Congress. And do you think he will also block this, this one that you were just talking about? I don't think he will. <clears throat> I think he'll allow a vote on this. Uh -huh. um, and he may even support it. He may even support it. He may it. even support it. Um, Congressman Boehner has, early in his career, supported actually genocide what resolutions. What happened? <laughs> As with, unfortunately, many members of Congress, he's come to believe that uh, the United States relationship with Turkey is very mm -hmm. important, and and he defers to that. Having said that, uh, he is sensitive to the issue of religious freedom and uh, right. the values in the United States of, of uh, allowing people to um, celebrate and honor their own religions. And uh, I'm sure he believes that confiscating church properties is inappropriate. So I, I think there's a reasonable chance that he would allow a vote. For and there, there's another important aspect of this uh, recognition. I, I think we're all doing this. Uh, 
you know, campaigning for recognition in other foreign countries, uh, the eventual result would be a pressure from all over the world on Turkey, right? Yes. Is, isn't it the, the case? The, the goal you, is not... Is will not, you seek recognition from Turkey? Is absolutely. Is it important for you? Absolutely. The, the goal is not recognition by France or Australia or the United States. The goal is recognition by Turkey. And uh, recognition by other countries is simply a means to an end. I mean, this is all exactly, as you said, uh, a step in pressuring Turkey. The analogy I would draw is South Africa. Uh, with apartheid. The government of South Africa, the apartheid government of South Africa, didn't voluntarily hand over power, didn't say, oh, we've been wrong all these years. They gave in to uh, enormous international pressure and uh, came to understand that their position was untenable. And we want to make Turkey's position of denial untenable. We want to put Turkey in a position where they have no choice but to acknowledge it. So yes, our goal is uh, first, acknowledgement uh, by Turkey, and secondly, uh, justice, uh, reparations from Turkey. And now there's a talk that the president of Armenia might recall or might just withdraw, uh, you know, these protocols from the big agenda in the parliament. Well, how do you evaluate this prospect? Do you think that he's doing the right thing? What do you think about protocols? Did they do anything good to us? Or, or you, you have different opinion on that? I think the protocol... He claims that it, you know, it helped. It didn't with, with all due respect hurt. to the president, I think he's uh, sadly mistaken on the issue of the protocols. I don't think it helped at all. In fact, it greatly harmed Armenia and it harmed the cause for uh, genocide he's, recognition. He's saying that it, it's not the case because if that would have been the case, U.S. Senate would not have passed this resolution. It didn't. The reality is that for the past several years since the protocols have been signed, nowhere in the world have there been actions recognizing genocide because Turkey would argue, well, Armenia and, and Turkey are in reconciliation mm -hmm. and you shouldn't interfere with that process now with the passage of time uh, five years later uh, it's easier for people to see that was a ruse you know that was just an opportunity for turkey to buy time um, so in that sense uh, in terms of the protocols turkey won armenia lost uh, turkey gained four and a half years mm -hmm. of, of stonewalling uh, i don't know what the president thinks that Armenia gained. I would certainly be supportive of and would encourage the president to withdraw Armenia's signature. Turkey doesn't need to ratify the protocols because uh, they're getting everything they want, which is no action on, on any further recognition. Uh, not only that, I fail to understand how any president of Armenia could sign an agreement that calls for a commission of historians to examine the veracity of the genocide. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the president of Armenia would say, well, that's not what it says. The president of Turkey or the prime minister of Turkey ex interprets it exactly that way and the foreign minister of Turkey because they have repeatedly said uh, that they welcome a commission of historians. Notwithstanding the fact that the International Association of Genocide Scholars has unanimously opined on numerous occasions that what occurred was a genocide. so. Contrary to Turkey's uh, deception, historians have spoke, historians have, have spoken loudly, clearly, unanimously that a genocide occurred. It's time for Turkey to come to the table and acknowledge what occurred. So um, the president of Armenia should do the right thing and withdraw his signature. Now let's talk about another very, very, uh, you know, uh, I think dire predictions about the Armenian depopulation of Armenia or I would call it exodus of, uh, you know, Armenian population from Armenia in epic, you know, uh, proportions. Do you think that the HIDAD or Armenian National Committee of America can do that or has the tools to do something uh, to prevent or to stop this process? Well, let me first agree with your characterization that emigration is a tragic problem for Armenia. You know, um, the outflow of people uh, is simply terrible. 
uh, we all understand why it occurs. People are leaving because of economic pressures. Uh, they need to earn a living. They need to support their families. And so in that sense, it's understandable. However, it's a terrible blow to Armenia. It's a terrible blow to the future of Armenia. And th the first step that has to be taken is the government must uh, improve the economy, and, and not by a few percent per year. That's simply unacceptable. Uh, people are leaving because they want jobs, and if they don't have jobs here, they'll go wherever they can find jobs. In terms of what the Armenian National Committee of America can do, uh, well, well, I'm specifically meaning by saying that uh, what uh, uh, Armenian National Committee of America can do, uh, can you start advocacy for, you know, U.S. economic aid to Armenia? Is, is it or restart? You were doing this in the past more aggressively, but what happened now? It's not, well, we don't see any, uh, any new projects U now. U.S. aid um, over the past 10 plus years has fallen by 60 percent. Yeah, it's fallen because uh, the United States is allocating more aid to places like Afghanistan. You know, and Georgia. Uh, and, and Georgia, absolutely, and now Ukraine. And so there's always been another fire somewhere in the world where the U.S. has been allocating money. But part of the uh, visit that's occurring in the next two days uh, by four members of Congress uh, is for them to develop a better understanding of the challenges here and the opportunities to foster a closer relationship between Armenia and the United States. And so we advocate very strongly for uh, foreign aid, but we also advocate strongly for uh, in developing and improving uh, economic partnerships between diasporan, in our case American, but we welcome any and all diasporan uh, investors, whether they be uh, public uh, organizations or private organizations. Uh, our goal, our perspective is that uh, we must improve the economy uh, of Armenia. Without a strong and healthy and vibrant Armenia, there is no high tud. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we, we're advocating for a cause where we would have no country. Um, so, uh, it is a very high priority for the uh, and, and NCA. Yes, another question is, uh, you, you know, that recently, just two days ago, Russian president signed into the law, the new uh, immigration law, actually, which will uh, expedite the immigration to Russia or obtaining Russian citizenship. You can get Russian citizenship now if you can just simply communicate basic words in Russian, and you can get it in three months' time and you can live to Russia with your family, your father, your mother, your grandfather can get Russian pension, which is much higher than in Armenia. Don't you see that this is really threatening to the Armenian's national <laughs> I security? Do. I, I do. We don't, we don't want people leaving Armenia. We want people moving to Armenia. And yeah. so actions that um, increase the flow of Armenians away from here are, are not for the good of the country long term. So yes, I see that those Russian uh, steps as threatening uh, the vibrancy and well-being of our, of our country. And also sovereignty is being pretty much weakened by recent uh, you know, action taken by the Armenian government decision, for example, to join customs union which will then become Eurasian Union, which is political structure. So you are giving up your sovereignty in pretty much, you know, in substantial way, you know, and you cannot deal with a third country. You cannot sign trade relations with third countries without getting permission from the, you know, higher, uh, you know, places from in Moscow. What, what do you think about that? Was that a strategically wrong decision or? I think it was, um, particularly the way it was done, which was just mandated by the president uh, upon his people, upon the country, upon even his government, without any advanced discussion, without uh, input as to safeguards, without uh, input as to how it would be implemented. Clearly, Russia provides an important economic relationship. Russia provides important security to Armenia that perhaps is not available elsewhere. Having said that, 
Armenia had up until uh, a year and a half ago maintained, uh, not a year and a half ago, I guess six months ago, maintained yeah. wonderful neutrality between the East and the West and, and walked a fine but I think important line. And I think the way this agreement was entered into and a number of the uh, implications of it have not been as thought out uh, as should have been uh, and do threaten not only the economy but the long-term sovereignty of Armenia. And again, um, we no more want Armenia to fall to uh, a Turkish and Azeri blockade than we want Armenia to become a satellite of Russia. Neither of those are, are acceptable outcomes. And so we should all be working to strengthen the vibrancy of the economy here uh, so that Armenia can be a healthy, growing, independent state that can make its own decisions then uh, about At security. least Armenia has two great allies in the Western world, right? France and the United States. Well, so I, th I think why, there are, why to shy away I agree. from the West? And I think there are other allies. I mean, certainly yeah. Canada and, and Argentina exactly. are, are, are both countries that uh, have very solid relationships with Armenia and where we have large communities who advocate And they are ready to help. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, yeah, we are concerned about Armenia's uh, not maintaining... Um, a fine neutrality between mm. the East and the West and and uh, becoming too dependent upon uh, Russia. Now, Mr. Nochkin, we have now a statement from Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan and uh, he actually uh, says that it is with this hope and belief that we wish that the Armenians who lost their lives in the context of early 20th century rest in peace and we convey our condolences to their grandchildren. In Turkey, expressing different opinions and thoughts freely on events of 1915 is the requirement of pluralistic perspective as well as of culture, of democracy and modernity, he says. And then he says, the incidents of the First World War are our shared pain. To evaluate this painful period of history through a perspective of just memory is a humane and scholarly responsibility. What is your comment, first reaction to this? I think it's a very clever statement by the Prime Minister, but sadly it continues his campaign of deceit. Um, nowhere in here, of course, does he make reference to the genocide. Uh, he refers to shared pain. I don't know what the shared pain is. Uh, our parents, our, our grandparents, our forebears, our people, our nation are the ones who suffered, are the ones who were almost wiped out. Uh, today, Turkey enjoys, enjoys the spoils of, of that murder, of that genocide. Uh, many lands and properties in Turkey, wealth that has been built in the country, came from the spoils of taking from our fellow Armenians, but, yeah. from, from the institutions, from the churches. And uh, Turkey has benefited from having killed uh, a million and a half Armenians, and, and Erdogan is talking about shared pain. Uh, I don't understand this concept of shared pain. You know, it's nice of him to say he's sorry, but what is he sorry for? He simply says he's sorry for the losses that we experienced. How about the murders that Turkey committed? How about the genocide on the Armenian race? Where are the reparations? Where's the restitution? Um, this is, again, a clever statement on his part. Which will be used now in other countries. It will be used. Those and it's our responsibility to point say, out. See, Erdogan already shares the pain. Yeah, well, he has more pain to suffer. Uh, it's very hypocritical, this statement that, um, uh, you know, we have a pluralistic perspective on Turkey. Does he, he say that, you know, they recognize, uh, you know, the murders, you know, no, that the government no. but, but he talks actually about the, was organized killing of Armenians? He talks right about now? the fact that it's a plural, that in Turkey expressing different opinions and thoughts freely on the events of 1915, is the requirement of a pluralistic perspective. So this is a country in which if you and I stood up yes. and said that what occurred was in, was a genocide, we could go to jail. Yes, uh, absolutely. Ohan Pamuk. A lot uh, of people were jailed uh, you know, uh, for uh, this. A, an internationally acclaimed Turkish yes, exactly. author has been sentenced uh, for having written about the genocide. Where is the pluralism? Where is the openness in society? And is, does he share responsibility for this crime? There is nothing about that. No, right? and, and uh, genocide scholars have characterized 
denial as as the last phase of a genocide mm. and and Erdogan in uh, continuing to deny uh, continues to commit the crime of genocide on the uh, Armenian people and frankly any government official who fails whether it be in Turkey or elsewhere who fails to characterize what occurred uh, as a genocide is simply engaging in the same denial that, that Turkey engages in and is, and is accommodating uh, the lies of the Turkish state. But maybe this is the first step before they do something else. Do, do you see any softening of their stance or, or not? This is just... Well, one could argue that uh, Erdogan is, in some, is in some fashion attempting to soften uh, an ultimate step on his people. Uh, you know, perhaps that's the case, but uh, he knows what occurred. He knows very well what occurred. And he needs to be a man and step up and acknowledge. I mean, we'll give him full credit if he characterizes what occurred as a genocide. And then if he steps up and enters into discussions about what's appropriate reparations. But uh, I see this as nothing more than um, clever diplomacy on Turkey's part. Hypocritical, uh, continuing in their campaign of, of denial. Um, and, and in no way representing any meaningful or substantive progress. Thank you very much, Mr. Khajik. My pleasure. Thank you.